Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Marina Hawkins and I'm currently a student in the Ecology and Society course at Texas A&M University, taught by Dr. Bixler. Today I wanted to introduce you all to an important map for resilience thinking, which is the adaptive cycle. So all ecosystems at every level go through the four stages of the adaptive cycle. Exploitation, conservation, release, and finally reorganization. In this video, we will define these four stages using the three properties that determine the characteristics for each cycle. And I'll also go through two examples of systems analyzed using the adaptive cycle as a model. So the characteristics that we use to describe the state of each system are potential, connectedness, and resilience. Potential describes the capacity for future change and sets the limits as to what is possible. Connectedness describes how well a system can adapt by using its internal controls as opposed to being influenced or regulated by external variables. And finally, resilience describes how vulnerable a system is to unexpected disturbances that can push it past its threshold. So in other words, it's the capacity of a system to tolerate disturbances without collapsing. As I mentioned, we'll be using these key properties to examine the unique defining characteristics of each phase in the adaptive cycle. So we'll start with the exploitation phase, which is also commonly known as the growth phase. This cycle is characterized by rapid expansion. Actors in the system are just beginning to be established and the opportunities appear limitless. The resources are exploited at an exponentially high rate in order to take advantage of all the opportunities being presented. So the R phase or growth phase is characterized by a declining potential for future change. The exploitation of resources limits the future possibilities for the system. The connectedness in the R phase is low as well. Since the system is only just being established at this phase, no strong internal connections have been formed. However, the resilience of the system at this stage is high. Because of the few internal connections, it's easy for the system to adapt to external variables. After the exploitation phase comes the conservation, or K phase, in the adaptive cycle. This stage has also been called the consolidation phase, and it's characterized by accumulation of resources. So as the system approaches maximum capacity, the growth rate slows and connections within the system increase and become stronger, causing the system to be more rigid and structured. So the potential at this phase increases from the R phase, being characterized as high. As resources are being stored now rather than quickly exploited, the high capital allows once again for many possibilities for future allocations. The connectedness for the conservation phase is also high. So in both structural and organizational terms, the system continues to increase its connections in this phase, making it more rigid and less flexible. So due to this rigidity though, the resilience of the system at this phase decreases dramatically and is characterized as low. So together, the exploitation and conservation phases are known as the for loop in the adaptive cycle. So this sequence is slower compared to the back loop of the adaptive cycle and systems spend most of their time here. As we discussed, connections and overall system stability increases during the for loop phase, as does growth and resource accumulation. However, all of this attributes to a rigidity of the system that makes it brittle and poised for breakdown. This system structure that is on the edge of caving in brings us into our next phase in the adaptive cycle. The release or omega phase is also known as the collapse phase. This is when the system undergoes a shock or a disturbance that exceeds its resilience levels. Due to this, all the connections formed in the conservation phase are severed and chaos reigns in the system. So during the omega phase, the potential of the system declines dramatically. Resources are abruptly lost or exhausted, destroying future possibility of use. The connectedness level during the release phase was high at the beginning. However, as time progresses through this shock or disturbance, those connections are destroyed. And once again, the system finds itself unable to control for the external variables that are acting upon it. As a result, the resilience of this system is also low, as its overall adaptability lowers dramatically. 
So after the collapse of the system comes the next phase in the adaptive cycle known as the reorganization or the alpha phase. So this is also seen as the renewal phase. At this point, because of the uncertainty about future possibilities, the system is open to reorganization. The likelihood of creative change is also highest at this phase in the adaptive cycle. So looking at the potential for the alpha or reorganization phase, it makes sense that there's a high potential for change, meaning that the future outlook is flexible and not yet concrete. Since the system is once again being reformed and reorganized, the connectedness at the alpha phase is once again low. However, the resilience for the system is once again high. So due to the wide region of stability at this phase, it's easy for the system to adapt to any external disturbances. So together, the release and reorganization phase are known as the back loop of the adaptive cycle. The back loop is characterized by a much shorter and faster period that creates opportunities for innovation, redesign, reorganization, and renewal by the redistribution of resources. So next, I'm going to use two examples that I adapted from Assessing and Managing Resilience in Social Ecological Systems, a practitioner's workbook to demonstrate real life examples of social ecological systems as they move through the adaptive cycle. So the first example is one of the telephone company Bell, Bell System back in the 1890s. So the expiration of patents caused the Bell System to lose its monopoly over the telephone industry, which sparked the release or the omega phase of the cycle. During the reorganization phase, Bell System restructured by hiring new leadership and proposing new business strategies to once again assert dominance. This led them into the growth phase when Bell System began acquiring other companies and exploiting their resources, and which finally led to the conservation stage, where Bell Systems once again gained enough power and connections to become a regulated monopoly. The second and most popular example for examining the adaptive cycle is that of a forest fire. So forest succession begins with bare, fertile soil that's quickly colonized by grasses and shrubs who can thrive in that environment. This would be considered the growth phase. The forest will begin to mature, structure increases, and reach its maximum, ca maximum carrying capacity for growth, which by definition is the conservation or case stage. A combination of excess biomass, dry conditions, and a spark can spur a forest fire. This destruction of all existing structure is the release phase. Following the fire's destructive rampage, the forest can enter the reorganization phase. Regeneration of plant life and various forms of capital will set the stage for the following forest succession and its developmental growth phase. So in conclusion, the adaptive cycle is used to study the dynamics of constantly changing social ecological systems. The adaptive cycle accounts for both the stability and change in complex systems and is a useful map of resilience thinking. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'm going to post the link to this Prezi presentation so you guys can access it and get all the information you need. Thanks and giggum.